Hey guys, what's going on? Yeah, I know you haven't seen the Celtic Tapestry in quite some time. I remember I had that uh, back up uh, in the background in my early videos way back five years ago. So long ago. So, yeah, don't have it in my bedroom anymore. I have it uh, in the hallway. But, uh, yeah, six, 600 subscriber celebration. Thank you to each and every one of you for uh, subscribing to my duct tape production of a channel. <laughs> Oh man, and for my, count them all, 15 subscribers on Odyssey, which uh, will be my future. I'm surprised I've lasted as long as I have on YouTube, but again, like I said before, it's only because my channel is so small. Uh, I know it's nothing in the grand scheme of things, but you should celebrate every milestone, big or small. And uh, it's not my livelihood, but then again... Most people don't make their livelihood on YouTube, and if they do, it's very precarious because of all their censorship and rules and everything, so um, probably for the better, you know, that it's not. I have a stable income now. So, what are we going to talk about? Well, I want to talk about Kyle Rittenhouse, of course, because that case is very interesting. I've done several videos on it uh, throughout the months, but everything I would say, other commentators have already said. Like, so I'll just be repeating, and you probably have already listened to them say it, so there's no point in that. I did want to make a video about, uh, kind of a follow-up to the video I did about how uh, COVID affects people with autoimmune disorders. I want to make a follow-up video on how the vaccine affects people with autoimmune disorders. And I searched the internet far and wide for quite some time, and I found literally nothing. I didn't use Google, because they censor everything. I went to the back-end sites, DuckDuckGo, other stuff like that, actual medical journals, ser searching in medical journal uh, databases, nothing. Every single post, everything, all the information I found was that the vaccine uh, works less effective for them. Um, they, have need, they have need more boosters more often, and it's just less effective. So, that's all I found. That's And every single one of those is like, more research on other effects is still being conducted. Nothing has been established yet. Which I thought was kind of odd, but that's just how it is. With a new virus, it takes a long time to gather enough data to make a conclusion or state anything definitive. That's why jumping the gun and making all these pre preliminary... Uh, statements about things, you, you're wrong half the time because you you rushed it. So that's going to have to wait. So what, what can we talk about to celebrate our 600 subscribers? Well, we can tie in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial to the premise of the video that there is a two-tier justice system in this country now, just like there is a two-tier economic rules. For people now how do they divide this what are the tiers what are the different groups it's basically if you're a Democrat or you're if you're a Republican if you do something for a Republican cause or you do something for a Democrat cause then that determines how the justice system approaches you now what do I mean by that if you riot and kill in the name of Black Lives Matter you burn down a store and you stab people the police don't care. They stand, they stand down, they let it happen. They don't go after you. The FBI doesn't go after you, even though Black Lives Matter is, by definition, a terrorist organization. They don't go after you. No one gives a shit. I mean, people like you and me care. Conservatives care. Libertarians care. Regular people care. Regular police officers care. But when their police sergeant, their chief says, we're not allowed to look into this, we're not, not allowed to go after these people, these are the rules being set down, from HQ, from the hive mind of the establishment, they can't do anything about it. There are many good people in many um, institutions that are evil, but they can't do anything about it. So they're not in positions of power to do anything about it. So, again, I'm not trying to paint all police officers as, oh, they don't care that Black Lives Matter is running around killing people and burning stuff down. No, uh, most of them do care. But they're hamstrung by government fucking bureaucrats. Same thing we can tie this in with the Afghanistan um, debacle. It's not like the military couldn't have gotten the civilians out if they wanted to. Of course they had the capabilities to do so. Of course the commanders and the soldiers cared about these people, and of course they wanted them out. But when Joe Biden stumbled around like a complete fucking retard, he's like, no, just leave him, go. 
They can't do anything. If they disobey orders, they be tried for treason and dishonorably discharged from the military. In fact, some of them did disobey Joe Biden's orders in a workabout fashion, and they went out in the dead of night and did uh, raids to these people's houses to get them out of Taliban uh, control in the dead of night. So those people cared. So, tangent. When I say police officers don't care that Black Lives Matter around burning some stabbing people, that's what I mean. The chiefs, the people giving the orders, the governors who are in charge of the police, who give orders to the police chief, who can get rid of the police chief if they don't like him. He's like, okay, you're not obeying my orders, I'll just kick you out and get someone else. Some other uh, affirmative action hire, low IQ brainlet to be my chief officer who just runs around and doesn't care about the Constitution and just does whatever I say. So, back to the point. If you're a Black Lives Matter terrorist stabbing people and burning things down, no one cares. Nothing happens to you. If you're Kyle Rittenhouse and you go out to protect businesses while being the businesses asked the police uh, force, asked the he I think he was a police cadet. So like some of the groups he was in, they asked his group. It's like some police cadet for like 17 year olds, like if they're coming to be a police officer. Like that. And they asked him, Can you help defend our businesses because our cars are being burned and broken into, our, our gas stations are being bombed, and the police officers just sit there and watch it. So, okay, we'll go out. So if you're Kyle, you go out and you do a noble and brave thing that is very rare for a 17-year-old to do nowadays, and you are attacked by violent, <laughs> I can believe that explained, violent pedophiles and wife beaters and professional criminals, and you defend yourself and you kill some, then you are put on trial. You are labeled a white supremacist by Joe Biden and by all of the Democratic media and all their little cronies and all these little little uh, brainlit Democrats running around, he's a white supremacist, he's a white supremacist, he's a white supremacist, with no proof. You're being called a terrorist. You are being called a right-wing extremist. It's like, we have completely inversed what we think as morally good and morally evil. We have completely 180 switched it from how we have historically looked at it for the shitload 99.9% of human history. Up until, like, even within my lifetime. Like, if you this same thing would have happened in, like, 1995, everyone would be like, uh, no, these guys are terrorists. Fucking kill them or put them in jail and put this shit down. They're killing innocent people, and good on you, Kyle, for killing them. That's what everyone, Republican or Democrat, would have said in 1995. 2005, even for that matter. This is such a relatively new thing that is being put into low IQ brainlets people's heads and it completely inverses it. If the anarchists, if the communist Marxists killed people on that night, which they did in that particular night in Kenosha, but they killed other people, they're viewed as social justice champions for equality and racial justice because they did it in the name of a left-leaning ideology. But when you kill people in the exact same situation, the exact same place, the exact same time, but you did it for, because I'm defending property, it might stand up for my American values, standing up for my fellow Americans, the right to own property and to protect your own property, oh, then you're an evil white supremacist, uh, right-wing militia uh, white supremacist. And this is how the legal system approaches you. Why did you do it? Left-leaning? Well, you're fine. Right-winging, you are evil. What what else can we... Now, that's just you. You may, you may say, oh, it's just one case, Robert. What's the big deal? You can't take one case and say that's how the whole legal system is happening. We've seen this with Nick Salmon. We've seen this with the Buffalo Shaman who just got put in jail for four years because he trespassed on the Capitol and knocked some things around and yelled and took stupid selfies. Like, that's the difference. When people were protesting the Kavanaugh hearings, I believe that was two years ago, and they stormed the Capitol, yes, you can look up the footage, they literally stormed the Capitol, broke into, threw things around to disrupt Kavanaugh's uh, nomination process, no one cared. No one called an insurrection, no one called them terrorists, no one was charged, at least I don't think so. And it was a whole big nothing burger. The media talked about it. Oh, it's no big deal. No, they're protesting a serial rapist. Remember, they labeled Kavanaugh a serial rapist with no evidence whatsoever. And then once he got confirmed, everyone just shut the fuck up and never said anything ever again. Because they are habitual serial liars and psychopaths. But that's beside the point. Um, no, no one called that insurrection. But then when right-wing people break into the Capitol and shuffle some things around and disrupt the process, then that is 
the worst fucking insurrection to have ever happened on planet fucking Earth on the scales of 9-11 and Pearl Harbor. It's not even a double standard. That would be an injustice to how much of a magnitude of the difference of the, uh, what am I trying to say, difference of the response that Democrats and their media cronies and the justice system apply that. No one was put in jail for breaking into the Capitol for the Kavanaugh hearings. The January 6th rioters are being held in solitary confinement without access to lawyers or doctors, which is breaking a plethora of fucking constitutional amendments, and they are being given obnoxiously ab abhorrent, over-the-top uh, punishments for essentially all they were doing was trespassing. They didn't kill anyone. They didn't set anything on fire. They didn't do any of that shit that Black Lives Matter thugs and their Democrat cronies have been doing for months now. He got four years for trespassing. But if you're a Black Lives Matter thug, you can literally stab someone in the street. No one cares. No one's going after you. You're fine. You can go to work next day. Keep on selling your drugs, buying drugs doing hood rat shit, yeah, whatever, it's fine. Because you did it in the name of Black Lives Matter. But when people did it in the name of Trump, or whatever you want to call it, on uh, January 6th, no, completely 180 different response. We see this with Nick Sandman. Nick Sandman just stood there, and, but he was a white, straight male. That is the most evil fucking thing you could be in the eyes of Democratic media. He was a straight, Trump-supporting white male. And these American Indians, um, well, first of all, the black Israelites hurled racial epithets at them, So, but no one cares about that because they're black, so it's fine when they do it. No big deal. Um, these Native Americans approached him and his friends and started yelling and acting like fucking retards and banging drums in his head, and he literally just stood there and smiled. Not responding, not giving in. They were trying to antagonize him on camera to do something. They can say, look at this violent white supremacist Trump support. Look what he did to these poor Native American veteran, which he was not actually a veteran. <laughs> so he knew what they were doing, so he just stood there. The evil smirk. And the media went nuts about this. Do you remember that? I mean, it seems like a million ago because COVID like, fucked up our sense of time. But do you remember how hysterical the fucking media was about that shit? He just stood there. But he did it in the name of Trump because he had a MAGA hat and he was there um, the rally uh, against abortion. He did it for a right-wing cause. Therefore, evil, evil, evil. But if you're Black Lives Matter or Antifa, you can stab people, beat your wife, rape kids, sodomize kids, steal stuff, burn shit down, attack police officers, and that's fine. No big deal. These are just... I just picked those three examples, Rittenhouse, Shaman Guy, Sandman, as just three of the high-profile cases that people know about to illustrate a pattern that this happens thousands of times. That's just three off the top of my head. Those are the big cases. One, But this happens all the time across the entire fucking country. This racialized, ideologized approach to the law. How do I apply the law, says these woke police officers and these woke judges and these woke DAs and all of these woke bu bullshit fucking people? First question they ask, why'd you do it? Right-wing cause or left-wing cause? That determines how we approach everything after that. That's the first question they asked. And um, to conclude, I mean, I don't think people have to t tell, tell people this, but that's bullshit. <laughs> That is what happens in communist states. That's what happens whenever communists take over a country, like in Eastern Europe or Russia, for example. When they take over, they're like, okay, who was supporting the formal regime? All these people, kill them all. Take them out back and shoot them, invade their homes, rape their wives, and kill them. Everyone else who was supporting the communists at their time, they're fine. They get positions of power, they get money, they get all this crap, and uh, they can do whatever. They, there's no protection for law. They can steal. They're... Um, corrupt is how they can take bribes. They can do all this stuff. The minute someone else from the fo former regime does anything, chop off their hand, put them in the gulag, shoot them in the back of the head, steal everything. Like, do and that's how they approach the entire fucking legal system. Was whether you're a commie or not. Which is why lots of people, they are terrified that th their family's going to die, that they bend the knee, and they become good little communist slaves working 
for the establishment, working for the government in hopes that they don't get killed. And that's what they want from us. That's why the Kyle Rittenhouse case is much more important than just a kid shooting two people. Our right to self-defense is on trial. If he is found guilty of murder because he objectively killed in self-defense, that is the most clear-cut case of self-defense that will ever exist on planet fucking Earth, you can look up the footage. Most people, most Democrats haven't even seen the footage. Most Democrats think he shot two black people. They don't even look at the footage. They don't care. They just beep NPZ, boom, message from media, Kyle Rittenhouse's white supremacist killed the black people, okay, beep, beep, boop, and then they go. And that's it. That's literally all they do. If he is found guilty of murder when he objectively killed in self-defense, then that effectively means that we have no right to self-defense. Black Lives Matter, Antifa, even non-political thugs, the worst people in fucking societies, rapists, murderers, arsons, communists, Marxists, all of these people would be emboldened by that. And I realize, wow, I can literally walk up to a person and kill them, and they can't do anything about it. Either I, they just let me kill them because they can't defend themselves, or they do defend themselves, and then they're put in jail for years, and their life is ruined either way. Either way, the life's ruined. You're dead, or you're uh, put in jail for many years, or life, or you're executed. Like, let's say, like, ten people attack Kyle, and he killed all ten of them. They would frame it as, like, a mass shooting and then execute him, uh, just like if a person opened fire in a theater and killed ten people. They think, they, they act like it's the same damn thing when it's not. That's what would happen in this country. The, all of the worst people of societies would just rise up and just, like, we can do whatever we want. People aren't allowed to defend themselves. If we do it in the name of a left-leaning ideology, then we can just go up and kill people, steal their stuff, rape their wives, sodomize their children, and no one will care. The, the law will do nothing about it. And if anyone dares to defend themselves, well, they'll be arrested. That is such a horrifying, terrifying, disgusting state of affairs. They look, oh, you right, Robert, like that would ever happen. It's happened historically dozens, if not a hundred times throughout the centuries. That's what happens. These people act like, oh, you know, all that World War II and stuff and all the, the mass murders and all the all the communist stuff, you know, that was like a century ago, man. Like, it, that stuff doesn't happen now. Okay, no one thinks it can't happen until it happens. It's like, oh, it can't happen here. That's what everyone thinks before it happens in all these places where, where it's happened. It's like, oh, that can't happen to me. That's everything Everyone, everything that's happened to that person. Sorry. What I meant to say was, everyone says, oh, that won't happen to me. Oh, it's already happened to someone else. Well, those people who these things happened to, they all thought that too before it happened. So, like, that's a like, really stupid way of looking at the world. So, that's it. Peace out, folks. Sorry, quick update. My brother just texted me right when I was done doing this video that Kyle Rittenhouse is found not guilty on all fucking charges. Thank you. This was so fucking important. Our right to self-defense is enshrined in the Constitution, and the justice system upheld it today. Thank God it's not all corrupt. Thank God they were not that racialized, idolized bullshit with the George Floyd case, which I did a video on how that was complete fucking bullshit. Yes, thank you. This is a good news for all Americans. You are allowed to defend yourself. You are allowed to defend your own property. You are allowed to kill people who are trying to kill you. You are allowed to kill communist Marxists who want to burn the whole fucking world down. You cannot take away our guns. You cannot take away our right to defend ourselves and our own families. Fuck that shit. Thank you.